this thought is God wants us to be part of his purpose and his plan. The focus verse in 2 Timothy, chapter number 1, verse number 9. It says, Who hath saved us and called us with a, with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Uh, the lesson text comes from 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, verses 8 through 11, and then Nehemiah, uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 6. Amen. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Of course, our custom to read the first, you read the second one, and so on, and then we read the last one together. Amen. First, second Timothy, chapter 1, verse number 8, says, be, that, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Who have saved us and called, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose, to be great, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But now it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. And have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereas Where too, you I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. All together. So we will be the law. And all the law is joined together into the half for the people of the mind of the world. Amen. The cultural connection is a shot heard around the corporate world. The shot heard around the corporate world. Dan Price fired the shot heard around the corporate world in April of 2017. He is the CEO of Gravity Payments, a credit card payment process, processor based out of Seattle, Washington. He called his employees together for a major announcement. Uh, they thought his, this announcement would affect the company's bottom line, not their own. He announced to his 120 member staff that he was taking a voluntary pay cut to raise each of their salaries to a minimum of 70,000 per year. There was stunned silence at first. No one asked him to repeat himself, so he did. Then, then the team started clapping, cheering, and giving each other high fives. Dan Price was given to his employees nearly 90% of his annual salary. His team realized their quality of living was about to improve because their leader was willing to include them in the process of growing and bettering the company. The earth is the Lord's and everything therein. God does not need our help. An untold number of angels wait at the ready for God to send them here and there. Yet our God includes us in his purpose and plan. He invites us to partner with him in making disciples around town, around the world. We are part of more than just a company. We are part of a kingdom. Yeah. A kingdom ruled by a God who does not need us or wants us to work for him. Amen. Thank God for his purpose and thank God we are a part. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'd like to give an honor to God, who is head of my life, Pastor Morrison, for giving me this opportunity to teach this Bible le this, uh, Sunday school lesson, to stand before the people of God, amen, and stand behind this uh, sacred desk. You know, I thank the Lord for all he has done, all he's going to do, and y'all pray for Brother Rose, pray for me, that the Lord will help focus my mind. You know, and the Lord, you know, and there's no flesh for glory in his sight. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> it's now, it says if you uh, ever had a home built, uh, then you understand the value of a set of blueprints. And lucky enough for us, this Sunday morning, we have an architect in our midst. Amen. We have Brother Cecil who's an architect. 
Amen. And, he, and anybody that uh, ever worked in, you know, the skilled trades or building, we know the importance of cleanliness. Amen. Pastor Morrison also was a home builder. So we all know the importance of blueprints and a plan. Yes. And even building, whatever you build, mm -hmm. whether or not you're building uh, an airplane, uh, bridges, steel structures, homes, you always start the plan with uh, what they call a plot plan in the, in the uh, engineering. What I do, or they have what they call the architectural plan. What that is, is a picture of the overall uh, building or whatever you're building is a picture of the overall design of it. Yeah. So whenever you start a project, you always start it with the end in mind. Amen. Amen. So you build, you just don't haphazardly build. You build with a specific end in mind. And so, and I want you to remember that. That when you ever build something, you always start and see that picture right there that's hanging up is a picture of a finished product. Right. Now, we haven't put one uh, per down, but the picture that's on the front of it is the picture of the finished product. And then as you dig deep into the, um, the um, <clears throat> plans, you begin to see the unfolding of the details of the plan. You know, the plumbing, the electri electrical work, and stuff like that, but you always start with the end in mind. So as is when you plan chess. You don't just haphazardly make moves. You have what you call the opening, the development, and the end game. And you always begin with the end in mind. What the end is going to look like. With the vision of what the end is going to look like. <clears throat> now, so as God's plan, a plan includes us. And God is an intentional and deliberate God. In other words, God does not have a plan and he just doesn't have, have it to get put together. He was, he, he uh, says God has never at one time performed anything by random, yeah. amen, or by happenstance or by chance. Right. Now, this solves the argument of which came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> the chicken came first. Amen? Because God, the, the, and see, there's a there's there's a theory, scientific theory that you know things are random. Yeah. You know, they say, oh, that, that when they took a telescope, some smart guy took a telescope and he looked up into outer space and he seen everything flying around and buffeting at each other, and from then he decided that. The universe was chaos, and all things was random, you know. But, but he failed to remember that the story of Leroy Brown. Y'all know who Leroy Brown is? He was the best pool shooter in town. Okay, and what it was was is this. Is that there's this, this theory called, what's that called? Uh, entropy. That it has to be order for there to be chaos. So therefore, things randomly started going apart. Now think about this. Leroy comes to shoot pool. And there's an orderly set of racks of, and then he goes and he pulls back and he hits the thing, and all the balls go everywhere, and with the first shot, the trick shot, he sinks the ball in the corner's pocket exactly where he wants to be. You get what I'm saying? Now, to the person on the outside, it looks random. But to the mind of Leroy, the pool shooter, it is order because all the balls did exactly what they wanted them to do. Hmm. Amen. This ball may have bumped into the eight ball, but he wanted to do that. This may have ran into this ball, but he wanted to do that. See, from the outside of things, it may you may perceive chaos, but to the mind of the designer, there is order. Hmm. Amen. Amen. So, and that's why as you get closer and closer to things, you begin to see there everything 
has order in this universe. That when God created the universe, he created everything with a set of order and plan. And where there is order, there is thought. And where there is thought, they say the existence of a watch shows the existence of the watchman. So God, when he went about forming the universe, he did it all with the plan. When you look at creation, he had the end in mind of man. Amen? So when he began to create things, by the time he got to the sixth day, the earth was already fully developed for man to live. That's why he brought the water first, then he brought the fish, then he brought this, and what he did was he did all that in a particular order so man can survive on this planet. Amen? Because he did this all with the intention that man, in his plan, he always had the intention of man having a relationship with him. You know, I read this, I get these uh, alerts from Science Magazine, and uh, you know, scientists, they used to think that the earth, you know, that there was, was just a rock and water came to the earth later when it, a meteorite hit it. Well, they got to study and stuff, and Earth scientists and geologists found out that water was when the earth was created. Just like the Bible said. I tell people now, if you think you need to contradict the Bible, I tell them now, you just need to study a little while. Because it is, if the Bible is incorrect, it is our understanding that needs to catch up with Scripture every single time. Now, when God created the world with man in mind, you know what I'm saying? He created man to have a relationship with him. And see, when he created man, man was in the garden, and he was happy. He was what they call innocent, because he was walking around naked. Didn't know that he was naked. Amen. But as soon as he consumed from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he realized that he was naked, and he became ashamed. And what he began to do was he began to try to get fig leaves to cover up his nakedness. And see, and this is the first mentioned principle of, of hermeneutics where people have self-righteousness. In other words, when we are find ourselves in the wrong, we begin to try to use our own efforts to cover up our sin or to cover up our shame. But see, like the Bible says in the book, the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Whoa, all right. So therefore, when man has sinned, God had to kill an animal to make him proper covering to cover up his nakedness. Mm. Now here's the deal. After he killed the animal, he had to put those skin, those skin, those skin covers on. You know, if God would have killed that animal and he just said, say, yeah, man, them skins sure look good. This sure won't cover my nakedness. But I'm just going to sit there and watch it. No, he had to be an active participant in his salvation, yeah. i.e. baptism. Yeah. He had to obey the word of God. Yeah. Amen. So as it is today, any of our little efforts that we try to do to cover up our sins is insufficient. You still gonna be cold. That wind gonna still gonna still touch you. Yeah. I said, but when God comes along and shed blood, which was according to his plan, he makes a proper covering, but we still have to obey it. We have to put it on. Whereas they say we have to put on Christ. And where do you put on Christ? In baptism. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 So therefore, God always had a plan in mind. Yes. God's plan always included us. He never made a plan that was outside of us. He had a plan with us in mind. Amen. He saved us and he called us. Now one thing about this plan is he called us to be active participants in this plan of salvation. Amen. He just didn't call you to sit 
on the Pentecostal pew. Amen. He called you to also that once you say, Come on. Amen. To go and tell the world how good it is to serve Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. Every person has a conscience to understand right from wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I tell people that's the truth. You don't got to folks know when they ain't wrong. I, let me tell you, even a baby know when he's wrong. <laughs> I had a little nephew named, I'm, I ain't going to tell you his name. But when he was trying to potty train him, he would hide, he would, he would, he would do his thing and then take it and hide it in the closet somewhere. <laughs> you, why, why was he hiding? Because he was ashamed and he knew he was wrong. See, as a child, you know you're doing wrong. Amen. It, and, and I tell people, that's why I tell people, don't be coy. Don't come here pretending. You know that you are wrong. Yes. But one thing about the Lord is he just does not leave us in condemnation. He gives us a way to clean ourselves up. Amen. 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 Now, <clears throat> Let me get on that. Let me get on down here. It says, God plan begin with us in mind. Yeah. Now it says in the now uh, it says in the book of John, one and one tells us that in the beginning was the word. Yes. Now the Greek uh, word for word is logos. Logos. And all I, and also see you gotta understand now, this is proper context when you put history history to it. Yeah. John was not Greek. He spoke Greek, but he was not Greek, he was Jewish. So therefore, if you go back to the Jewish word to logos, which means plan, you have you come you found this word called Dharma, which means God as he expressed himself. Or God as he revealed himself. Amen. The logos means, you know, it's the same. It means plan or thought or mind of God. So in the beginning was the word. In other words, was the plan. In the beginning, God had the end in mind. Amen. So when he was when he went about creating things, he had in the beginning. He was God that was trying to express himself or reveal himself to us. Amen. And from the beginning, he had the end in mind. That's why Jesus said that he is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Amen. When God went about to create, now I think, let me get that scripture. When you got to get too far ahead of myself. Amen. I want you to get the scripture, uh, t Hebrews 10 and 7. Then said, then said I, uh -huh. Lo, Lo, I come, I come in the volume of the book. The of the book. Yeah. yeah. It is written. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let me tell you something. What this was was he said, Lo, I come in the volume or the pages yeah. of the book. Amen. In it is written to me to do my will, O God. God does talk to himself. Amen. In other words, from in that Bible, from cover to cover, it's written about Jesus. Mm -hmm. If there is another God, the Bible don't mention him. Because from Genesis to Revelation, from the beginning to the end, it is a revelation or an unfolding of the plan of God, which is Jesus. Yeah. In the beginning, it says, now in the beginning was the Word, was God plain. And the Word was with God. Now, I like that word with. In the Greek, that means ethos. That word ethos means the driving force or the reason why you do everything you do. Mm. In other words, are you with the plan? Amen. So the man was the plan, and the plan was the man, and the man was with the plan. So therefore, there is no separating God from his word. Yes, sir. 
Amen. For God is his word, and the word is God. Yes. And everything that God did, he did with the plan in mind. Yes. With the revelation of Jesus in mind. Amen. Now, even though it wasn't fully to fruition, but it was already complete in the mind of God. Amen. Amen. That's why he said he is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. So in, so in Christ, when he began to enact this plan, it says, and the word was made flesh. Yes. In other words, in the fullness of time, God had it in his mind, but in the fullness of time, he began to put the walls up. Oh, yeah. He began to put the foundation down. He began to put flesh on the planet. Come on now. Amen. He began to walk and talk and say, I am. Now, let me tell you something. When he made the plan, when the plan came into fruition, it said, and we beheld his glory. I like that word glory right there. Glory means God as he revealed himself. So what we saw was when God, what we said, we said, and the word was made flesh, and we beheld his glory. In other words, we saw God reveal himself into the greatest revelation that the world would ever see. Oh, yeah. If you want to know the love of Christ, the love of God, look to Jesus. If you want to know the wisdom of God, look to Jesus. Everything that God is and ever will be is wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus. Yes. Because Jesus is the plan. And the plan is the man. And there is no separation. Yeah. Amen. And he, so therefore, now with this plan in mind of salvation, he left his mighty home in glory to bring to you and I redemptive story. And he, when he did this all in mind, he was doing this not just with him in mind, but also with you yeah. in mind. Amen. Amen. For us to be a part of that plan. Amen. Amen. It says God's plan involved us. Yeah. Being included in, a, in God's plan of salvation is the greatest blessing any of us could have ever experienced. Now, I like that scripture when Jesus said, these works that I do, he, he healed the blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears, rose people from the dead. And he looked at his disciples, which is also you and I, yeah. and said, these works that I do, you will do these works and greater works. You know what the greater works he was talking about? Salvation. Saving folk. Let me tell you something. Somebody can get healed from polio, yeah. and they ain't saved. Guess where they gonna go? They're gonna go to hell healed. Yeah. Somebody can be blind and get healed from being blind, but yes. they ain't saved. What's gonna happen? They gonna go to hell seeing. Amen. You know they might be mad at you because maybe they can want to go blind because they didn't have to see it, but. But Lord forgive me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is the greater work yes, sir. is salvation of the soul. Amen. That is what we, that is what God wants to include us in in this in, in this plan. Amen. In other words, go tell your neighbor about it. Amen. Go tell your sister about it. Tell your brother about it. Amen. Because when you save somebody's soul, you're doing a greater work than healing somebody. You're doing a greater work than, than, than I'm stopping the blinded eye. Come on now. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, when we say God will heal you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But God can also save you. Yes. Amen. Amen. How, you know, now I, you know, I believe God can do it all. But I'm just saying, if I had to choose, I'd rather be saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So the part that God is including to us, in us, is. The plan of salvation. Yeah. And also to enact his will on earth. Now, I tell people when you come to new birth, you gotta be ready to work. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, you know, this, this ain't no cruise ship. Come on now. <laughs> they call this the old ship of Zion. It ain't no cruise ship. Everybody gets a battleship. Everybody got a job. Everybody got to come to work. 
I like how Nehemiah said that the people had a mind to work. To work. Amen. Amen. We all have to be a part of the, you know, got to buy into the vision. Yeah. Amen. Everybody got to share and be participants in the vision. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but, you know, I know for a fact that what we got going on in New Birth is a beautiful thing. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? I know for a fact that what we sitting at right now ain't going to be enough to contain what God is supposed to do. Right. I know that. You know what I'm saying? And everybody knows that. That's why we are moving towards a vision. And let me tell you something. Same folk got to have a place to go. And am, I, am I right? Am I right? Amen. So we all are participants in the vision of this church. And we all are called to work and to work diligently. Oh, yeah. The Bible says, find what you can do and put your hands to it and do it. You know, I thank God for people that are good with kids. I, I am. I mean, I'm kind of good with them. Only thing I know about little kids is to give them what they want. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. And my wife knew it to be true because when I, when I was working night shift and I had to watch the kids, when she came home, they were running all over the place. Just, well, what they doing? What you do? I was like, well, they wanted some candy, so I gave it to them. You know, that's all I know about little kids. Just give them what they want. If they leave me alone, you know, you want this bird, hurt you, hurt you. So, that, that's, so we need people that, I thank God for people that are good with kids. Amen. And it says, Nehemiah, it says, have you ever considered that God that, that God desired to you to you to use you for the cause of spreading the gospel? What you are currently doing to allow yourself to be used. Amen. Yeah. Now, God, let me tell you something. God wants every single one of us to be used. And let me tell you something. Every single one of us have a quality about us that can be used to help build the kingdom. That's good. You know, they, you know, so, amen? Amen. It says, Nehemiah rallied the people to be to unify and to be involved in God's plan. Amen? amen. It says, upon hearing this, Nehemiah sat down and wept, wept before the Lord. And he began to pray and fast in order to find direction from God. Now, Everybody got burned. But, you know, I, everybody got to burn. But Nehemiah had a burn. But what Nehemiah did was he sat down and got direction from God first. Yeah. Before he went out and done what his, bur what his burden was on his heart. You know, somebody get a burden and they start praying. And they look up in the sky and they see a pea. And they take off and they start running and preaching. And God yelling at them, hey man, I didn't finish the spell. I was trying to tell you to pray. You know, it's best to sit down and get an understanding yeah. of what God wants you to do. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You sometimes because you can get a burden and you would take off and say, God wants me to preach. No, God wasn't trying to tell you to preach. That P didn't mean preach. That P means to pray. You know what I'm saying? So whenever whatever burden you got, you know what I'm saying? Sit down and pray about it. Yeah. And let God give you direction first. Amen. Because the Bible tells us to do what? Do all things in decency and in order. Amen. Amen. It says that um, God wants us to be involved in his plan. Yeah. Okay. It says God's plan. God's plan. Is, let's, I'm going to skip on down. God's plan is bigger than us. Yes. That's the main thing. The program, God's program, is bigger than us individually. Yes. Amen. So what God, so, so basically what, I'm, what I want to get to here is this. Is we got to learn, like, now, you got a big old, you now, where's my book? 
Brother uh, Jay works at the bus plant. And he works on the assembly line. Yeah. And the assembly line, you sit there and you focus on your job. You're right. Amen. And you do your job and you get on. Amen. Which is a good way of building something. But sometimes you have construction, it doesn't work like an assembly line. What you have to do is in construction, you have to learn how to collaborate and cooperate with all the different crafts that's out there on the job site. Amen. And you have to respect each person. That's right. And you have to work with the intent that the next person's job is dependent upon yours. Right. In other words, when somebody is framing up the framing up the building, the framing got to think about the sheetrock. Yeah. And the sheetrock got to think about electrician. Yeah. And the electrician got to think about got to think about the plumber. You know what I'm saying? Like if you got this going up here, the sheep rocker, when he when, when the electrician ran that, he left a box right there. And when the sheep rocker came by, he made sure he cut that hole in that box for the electrician to come by and do his work. He just didn't wall back over and say, well, that's just his problem. Right. Right. I don't care what he gotta do, I'm just trying, you know, and the framer put these studs 16 inches off center. Because when the sheep rocker go to hang that up, he don't want he he have to trust the fact that, that man put them 16 inches off center, so he would know where to screw that in at. So in the kingdom of Christ, we got to learn how to collaborate, cooperate, and respect each other. Amen. And respect each other's crafts. You know, everybody know. Like I say, I, I ain't. I, I want you put me back with them kids. You know, tell them what them kids be doing. <laughs> but I thank God for people that are able to. Yes. Amen. And another, and now one thing is that this, the plan of God, is multi generational and intergenerational. Yeah. What we do in here is establishing something not just for ourselves, but for your grandchildren. Yes. And your children, we making sure that truth endures to our grandchildren and to our great grandchildren. Oh yeah. Amen. And let me tell you, two hundred years from now, I want New Birth Tabernacle to be here. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I mean that from the core of my mind. Yeah. Amen. And you got. And let me tell you something. When you really believe in the cause, uh, you don't care who gets the credit. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. I like how the Paul put in Philippians uh, one. 17 through 18, he said, some people preach Christ because they mad at me. Mm -hmm. Some people preach Christ out of game, but nevertheless, Christ is preached. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, when you really believe in something, you're not concerned about who gets the credit. Amen. Let me tell you, so, sometimes you need somebody that brings the spotlight to some things. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. And, I, and, then, and when we, and in, 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 in this, also, we have to learn how not to be overly critical of one another. Yeah. Yeah. Romans the 14th chapter and the fourth verse says that uh, how now until I get that for me. So I'm gonna misquote that. Romans 14 and 4. In other words, don't be sitting around being critical of other saints. Mm. Because the only for them now what the context of this was Paul was talking about what's on your plate. Right. He was saying, don't be sitting around looking at what somebody else got on their plate. Right, right. Look at what's on your own plate. Yeah. Yeah, I got some chitlins over here. It's mine. Sorry, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same token, what Paul was also saying is, do not be overly critical. Of one another. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't sit back and just focus on, you know, this brother. He didn't. He didn't shake my hand right. Mm. You know, brother Rose can be dry sometimes. You know, you see my wife telling me to hurry your pastor telling me to hurry up because I have a tendency to chase 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 dust bunnies. <laughs> Thank the Lord for pastor. He'll tell me, hey, brother Rose, move it on. 
But don't be over fearful, brother Ross, for also being over analytical. Yeah. It's just me. Yeah. Amen? And at the same time, because what we do is, is we end up not using people where we need them to be used. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And Paul went as far as to say, okay, even if you see your brother overtaken in the fall, what you're supposed to do if you're spiritual? Restore. Restore me in love. That's right. And you're supposed to be up there talking to Sister Life, but did you see Brother So and so, Brother So and so? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we are all a part of this plan. Yes, sir. Now, I'm now I'm, I think about when I when I'm studying this, I'm about I'm, I'm coming to the end of my time. Come on now. You know what I thought about? I thought about Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman had issues, y'all. No. No. He had issues. But when they asked Michael Jordan, they said, Jordan, we physically get Dennis Rodman. Do you mind playing with Dennis Rodman? Jordan played against Dennis Rodman for years in Detroit. And Jordan said with the quickness, I'd rather play with Dennis than against Dennis. All right. Because Dennis Scott Rodman had a unique talent. Mm -hmm. He could grab 20-something rebounds a game, mm -hmm. and anybody you, you put Dennis Rodman on, he'll stop him from scoring. Amen. Yes, he did. So what, 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 what Phil Jackson did was say, yes, Dennis got problems, but what we're going to do, because we are a team, is we're going to put Dennis in a position where it will maximize his potential and his talent and limit his problems and shortfalls. That's what God do. He give us each other. That's right. And come here, Brother Minister Allen. And put us together in such a way to where I would strengthen with Brother Minister Allen as we get. Amen. And he would and, and, and he would compensate for where I would be getting strengthened when I would get on his end. My strength would be his weakness and his weakness would be my strength. God, God is a chess player. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Masterful coach. Yes. Yes. Amen. He got this thing all together. Yes. Amen. So don't be sitting around all critical. The Bible says if you're critical of one another, you're going to be consumed with one another. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell you, this is my, I've been in my time, this is my last, I'm going to tell you this last joke and I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Amen. This a uh, couple that went off to on a date. And they called the babysitter over, and they told the babysitter, and the daddy told the babysitter, look, I get this baby, to, I, to keep, when this baby cry, I get this baby whatever she wants, to keep from crying. So whatever that baby wants, get a baby whatever he wants. So they went off on a date, and they came back, and the baby was screaming, ah, ah. And the daddy looked at the babysitter and said, I thought I told you to get this baby whatever he wanted. And she said, I did. The baby wanted that mortgage messed up there, so I gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all pray my sister the Lord. <laughs> oh, sorry, Pat. <laughs> I never let you in. Gives the church the Great Commission. Amen. The Great Commission is to get the gospel out. And it's a saying, how do you spell gospel? It's W-O-R-K. It's work to get the gospel out. That's God's plan for the church is to get the gospel out to the world. One of my favorite 
scriptures in the Bible. It's uh, 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slack, but is long suffering to us would not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's the will of God. Amen. When we look at redemption in itself, the reason why we see people actually converting and repenting and getting baptized and doing the Holy Ghost because God sees the end game. That's right. Amen. 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 He sees it then. He got the he got a plan, he got a perfect purpose, and he see it, it being fulfilled. Praise God. And so it's so very important to realize that God wants us to operate in his purpose, oh, yeah. in his plan. He wants to use us, the angel oh. to carry the gospel. That's right. Man have to carry the gospel. God, in his plan, he chose for mankind. The Bible said many are called and few are chosen. But he called us out of darkness and his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. To fit us in his purpose and his plan. And his main plan, amen, is to get the gospel to the world. Yes. Amen. That's it. Praise God. And, and that's so important. It's vital that we understand that when God saves us, he wants us to go to work. Amen. Amen. Part of our work is to work on family members. Yeah. Part of our work is to work on co-workers. Yes, sir. Part of our work is to work on our neighbors. Now, when we think in terms of presenting the gospel to people, the Bible says this. We are living epistles. Bread of all men. So, even as you as a Christian, your life is a conversation. Yes. Yes. Amen. Your life is a conversation to the world. You don't have to walk around with a Bible in your hand. Right. <coughs> Praise God. Amen. When you go out to eat, what you do? You bow your head. That's right. In public. And you pray. Praise God. Years ago, uh, when I first got saved, I got saved in a place called Downside Germany. And uh, my pastor got saved in Kansas City. Amen. And uh, he went to Germany. And uh, he had a call on his life. And so he was wondering how to fulfill God's plan. And God gave him a burden for soldiers to be saved. And you know what he did? The Lord led him to the mess hall, that mess hall where, where the soldiers get fed. And every time he seen a soldier bow his head and bless the food, he ran over and sat by him. Mm -hmm. And then he started sharing the gospel. And he started winning people to God. Amen. Most of his congregation that he went to the Lord, he found them in a mess hall. Amen. And what he done was he was walking in God's perfect plan. And God saw the end game. He saw the end there were going to be people respond to the gospel, repel their sin, get baptized in the name, filled with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? I was one of them. Hey, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord for someone that looks at the gospel and I say, and say, I got a mind to work. Yes. Amen. I got to get it out. Amen. What God wants the church to do is sow the seed. Sow 
the seed. Yes, yes, yes. And he'll get the increase. Sow the seed and pray over it. God will get an increase. Praise God. Amen. The beautiful thing about sharing the gospel, you can share the gospel sitting in your living room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All you need is an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can share the gospel on Facebook. Yeah. You know, it's we got this technology age. Oh, and you know, you can have outreach on this phone. Yes, sir. Praise God. Use the technology that God has blessed us with to get the word out. Praise God. I thank the Lord for um, this pandemic. You know, there's some good that's coming out of the pandemic. Yeah. The devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And guess what? We're on Facebook. Well, Brother Ralph was teaching on Facebook. And then people who were not here heard the word of God. Right? Amen. And then people that Look at the word of God on uh, YouTube. So we get the word out. Thank God for technology. But in order for the givers in that position, God allowed what? A pandemic. Right. So some good can come out of it. Amen. Praise God. The devil meant it for evil. For God meant it for good. Yes, sir. And so there are people who are actually getting the gospel in their living room mm -hmm. right now right while we sit here. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Let's thank the God, the Lord, for the truth. God's purpose.